by now, you guys have seen this kanji before, ninjutsu, right? This first part right here that we're looking at, nin, it's, it's a very unique kanji. I'm going to write it over to the side here as well, okay? It's a very unique kanji because what it is, is this kanji here, it means um, the ability to overcome, right? Nin. So it means to overcome. It means to endure pain, right? It means to persevere. So when you think about endurance, the ability to endure pain and the ability to overcome, those three things is pretty much anyone who's ever taken my black belt exam knows that up through black belt on that exam, that is its fundamental principle of the test, to make you feel a lot of pain, to overcome that, to persevere, and to endure, and keep going. So this is this kanji nin. Now, the reason it, it, it's a very unique kanji, because it also means secrecy and concealment, and stealth, right? So when we have this kanji here, nin, if you see it like this, so now we have ninja, right? So ninja, ninjutsu, so this ja or sha means person, person of, person of stealth, person of secrecy, um, a person who endures, a person who overcomes, a person who can endure a lot of pain, right? So all of those things detail very specifically the things that we're doing in this dojo. You know, and I know a lot of other ninjutsu dojos say that that's what they're doing, but you know, and I'm not here to make past my judgment whether I believe they're doing that or not. I'm just saying that I think that they say they're doing it, but I know damn good and well we are doing it. So when we look at this kanji nin, we're seeing endurance, perseverance, the ability to overcome, the ability to take pain. When you guys do something that you've done a lot of times, sometimes people tend to lose focus. You know, stealth walking. You know, I think a lot of schools don't do it as much, right? We do it all the damn time. You know, I, mean, I can't tell you how many videos on YouTube we have about stealth walking, right? But we're going to keep doing it. And even though um, the way homes are made today with carpet and foundations and things, you know, the way that just things are made, the footwear that we wear today with rubber soles and form-fitting shoes and things like that, everything's just much different than it was back then. I think sticking to the roots and being able to practice those things are very important. But I think more importantly than just understanding the historical rel uh, relevance of those techniques, I think understanding the idea of perseverance and endurance. Doing it even when you lose focus. So if we do it three times, you don't really lose focus. You do it one time, you don't lose focus, you're in it. But you do it three times, it starts to wear on you. But then you start doing something five, ten, fifteen times. Then it's like, you know, you're not, it's hard to lose, your focus isn't as um, strong as it was to start. We're also going to focus on um, historical ninjutsu. That's one thing about the, the Shinobi Jutsu Taikai that's much different than, say, the Daikomi Osai or the Tomoru uh, Shinobi Keiko. The Tomoru Shinobi Keiko is specifically that tradition, in and all. So all the survival skills, all the Taijutsu and com combative skills, all the, the, the swordsmanship and all the different various um, Kobujutsu skills, as well as ninjutsu skills, because Tomoru is known for its ninjutsu but it has a lot of other skills in it than just ninjutsu. The Daikomi Osai is Burori Ninjutsu, which is the, um, the idea of the seven traditions come into one, and those seven traditions make up five areas of training. What makes the stealth camp very unique, the Shinobi Jutsu Taikai, is everything that we do, we're gonna do one thing, and once we do it, we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at some scroll, or densho, or something, something historical. We're gonna look at that concept, to look at a lesson from the past, and then go back out and do some more dirt time. And that dirt time, uh, that elbow grease, that's what really makes you a better martial artist. You can't get good doing stealth unless you're practicing stealth. But we always start all of our camps, whether it's the Shinobi Jutsu Taikai, the Tomoru Kai Taikai, um, or the Daikomi Osai, all of them start the same. We always start with climbing skills. And the reason I always start with climbing skills is I think that's important that we start with a skill that isn't a skill that you guys use in the modern day. It's not something that you guys use every day. Most people don't go out and climb every day. They're not climbing trees, right? They're not climbing rock walls. Those aren't the things that are normal. You normally do push-ups, sit-ups, and squats, right? You normally hit the bags. You normally do kata or swordsmanship or whatever. You don't normally put on a pair of shuko 
and climb a tree 20 foot in the air. Right? So it, it sets the tone to be able to do something, to be able to set your mind into doing something at that time in history. And it is a set of skills that is very specific to the art that we are trying to perfect. Right? That's why we always start with those. And I'm always, until I die, we will always start with climbing skills. You know, maybe I move, maybe the park ain't there, whatever. Yeah, I don't give a damn. We will always start with climbing skills because I think it sets that tone. You know, the historical ninja, how you think they went and gathered information? They climbed up walls, they climbed into castles, they climbed up trees, right? It's like uh, in the impotent, it says uh, the use of big trees. What the, how the hell do you get in one? You climb. Yeah. Those are the things that people overlook. It's like survival skills. You know, we are, and, I, and I'm going to say this because this is true. I started doing survival training videos on YouTube. Survival skills says on Jutsu, we put out uh, the handbook, Shin Amin Amich, 2012. We had a whole chapter on survival skills. We started putting out survival videos on YouTube, our website, some of the other forms of social media. No other ninjutsu school was doing it at all. None of them, not publicly anyway. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack there. I'm going to say none of them were doing it publicly. They weren't writing about it. They weren't posting about it. And they weren't making videos about it. And then all of a sudden we do it, and now I'm seeing every ninjutsu school teaching survival skills, and you know what I mean? It's like, come on. You know what I mean? And I, and I get it, they're all watching me. I understand that. And it's just fine, they can watch all they want, you know? They try to keep up, I got a lot more. I'm gonna keep setting, setting some new trends in the ninja community, I can guarantee you that. I've posted this a hundred times, and I mean it exactly the way I say it. Because it, I can't, I can't uh, because I want to be very clear with this. Ninjutsu, the, the word jutsu means skills, technique, or art of. Ninjutsu is a set of skills. That's it. It is not set to any person. It is not set to any one organization or any one group of people. You're either training in those set of skills or you're not training in those set of skills. There is no, there is no martial art or military skill, or set of skills, or craft that you do in your life, anywhere in the world where someone can say they own it, right? Can someone seriously say, yeah, we're the only people, that we're the only organization that teaches firearms? We're the only organization that teaches stick fighting? We're the only real organization that teaches knife fighting? We're the only real organization that teaches ground fighting. Do you know how ridiculous that is? If someone actually said that, can you imagine a martial art organization that says we're the only real organization that actually teaches ground fighting? What would you think? It's a little ridiculous, don't you think? So when you hear that someone says we're the only organization that can teach this set of skills, it's a little ridiculous. So, Ninjutsu is a set, because it's a set of skills, it's not a lineage, it's not, there are ninjutsu traditions. Now, if someone says they're the only ones that teach this tradition, that's true. There are certain organizations that only teach certain ryuha, or certain traditions. That is absolute, of course, this. But I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, Igoru, Kogoru, Togakureryu, Kumogakureryu, Gyokushinru, Tomoru, Banru. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the Ryu. I'm talking about ninjutsu. Ninjutsu as an art. Ninjutsu is a set of skills. There are many organizations and many schools that teach their version of that. And we train in that. And to actually truly train in ninjutsu, or the art of stealth, the art of concealment, the art of endurance, the art of perseverance, or the art to endure pain, you have to do those things.